first live Instagram video. This is Marnell coming to you from Keepersall. Hello Instagram people. Um, I really have to get more active on Instagram. I'm, I'm um, learning about this. So I'm doing a live video from the bar at Keepersall. So this is actually the bar in the Grand Room. This is where Emily, our infusionist, does her video explanations of our cocktails. And today we're doing something, it's not only my first Instagram video, but it's also my first time um, to do a dual video. I wanna introduce someone um, that I've recently met and um, I'm super excited to introduce to everybody. And I think we're gonna try to figure out how to do a split screen. Okay. Hey, Hi. Emily, how are hey. you? Good, how this are you? This is so cool. This is my first time to ever do this. To all of our friends, this is Emily Sherman. And Emily, tell everybody where you are. So I am in Norman. I'm, I, right now I'm adjusting my, um, my camera so that it doesn't cut my head off. That was one test that I was, but I am in Norman, Oklahoma. And okay, I think that's, Good enough, yeah. In Norman, Oklahoma. Yeah, in, in my Tyler, home Texas. kitchen. <laughs> the, the crazy thing is that um, this whole COVID debacle that we're going through, um, it, it has made it easy for us to connect close here and socially distance. And you're, we're collaborating from Oklahoma to Texas. Yeah, who would have thought? It's, it's crazy. just the perfect, the perfect set of circumstances in the middle of some difficult circumstances. Exactly. So, uh, I'm sorry, I keep popping on and off, but I'm just trying to get it to where I'm not having to hunch over. Okay, there we yeah, go. Yeah, <laughs> there you are. You can see, your, you can see all of your hair. So, yeah. <laughs> so to our friends and um, all of our fans in the land of Instagram, um, Emily, this is my first Instagram video. Oh, okay. So I've done Facebook. I've never done an Instagram video. So we're going to see how this works out. But I want to introduce Emily Sherman to everyone. Now, um, we had this four-week window where we were open um, here at the Grand Room. And that's where I am right now. We were open and Emily came through with her husband and another couple. Mm -hmm. And um, we served you guys wine and we got to talking. And yeah. there's something about connecting when you're both passionate about the same thing and yeah. um we got to talking about wine and food and cooking school and then julia child came up and <laughs> a friendship was formed That's one thing led to the next and we were walking through your beautiful salt kitchen and just imagining the possibilities and you know you have such a beautiful piece of property there when we were sitting out and just watching the sunset uh, we could have been anywhere in the world. It's amazing that, that it is that close to, to my home, that we have such beautiful pieces of vineyard property just right over the river. So my, my mind was blown when I was there. Plus well, the I'm, wine was Thank delicious. you. <laughs> we are so blessed. I'm, I'm actually looking out at this view right now, and we're so blessed to have this gorgeous view. Okay, so Emily. You, uh, you, there's some things we, I want to get out of the way. I want to talk okay. about these things and I don't want to put you on the spot, but you won a little competition or you entered a, comp I, a little competition. I was a finalist. Um, really, that's what started my uh, recipe writing and uh, blogging uh, world. It opened that up to me. It was in 2010. I submitted a recipe to the Pillsbury Bake Off, and I was selected as a finalist, and then I went and competed in the uh, Bake Off competition in Florida, in Orlando, in, like I said, in 2010. I didn't win. That, that prize is a million dollars, and I probably would be on a beach somewhere if I had won that. But um, I, I did win a lot of friends and a lot of experience and a, a lot of doors opened for me in that world. My background is not in um, the culinary arts. I'm a self-taught uh, instructor and chef that, that uh, allows me to um, really relate to the person that I'm teaching and talking with. But I, my background is in mechanical engineering. And uh, so I really crossed, I really changed gears 
uh, when yeah. that happens. But it's funny, our God-given talents come out. Our passion <laughs> comes out. As we, as we grow, um, those things find, my husband started off as a physician and now he's a distiller and a grape grower. And um, your passion definitely um, uh, surfaces as, as you find out who you are. So it, it, I agree. And, and you know, people say, well, do you feel like you wasted those years? Cause that I'm sure your, your husband can relate. That was, those years were hard. You know, that was a hard um, training to receive and, and education. I worked hard to get that. And I think it gave me confidence to try the next thing and know that um, it gave me skills to relate to people. And it gave me a mind that appreciates detail. And I really translate that into my food. So although um, my call was, uh, really um, revealed through those experiences with the Pillsbury Bake Off and the things that came. I feel like everything up to that point led me to be prepared to step in confidently. And it's just been a fun, fun um, experience to, to take my family along for the ride. And and now, I just love how, you know, it, it brought us to the here where I'm getting to meet you. So, well, I have seen these Instagram posts. So I went, <laughs> and looked at all of these i mean your family eats well let me just say they eat well because because there's some and not only do they eat what looks like delicious food but it's beautiful food well thank you well so. and, and wouldn't you say that when we when we pay attention to the seasons and we treat well what's in like i said in season it's not hard to make it pretty right. um, I think that's, that's one of the things you and I have in common is we really are, we're season dependent. Each season brings a different um, pro part of the process and different things to use and make. And, and really that's what I inspired me with this recipe. One of the, the four that we're going to be sharing over the next four weeks. Um, yes. Is, is I looked out in my garden and I know I've lived in Texas so I know that you, it is hotter in Texas than it is here right now and gardens are just limping along if it's a home if you have a home garden and mine are my uh, my squash the squash bugs have just about done me in uh -oh. or at least my garden in. and it happens every year we had a good run uh, my herbs, some of them are doing really good, some are not. My tomatoes are still pulling through like champs, and my onions are just as sweet and beautiful as ever. And so as, as you and I talked before we got on this live about um, my food perspective and how I can fit in with Keeper Sol and what are some things that we can do together, I just started thinking, what's working right now for me? And that's really the voice that I want to give the people that are watching for this. And as, as we continue to encounter... Um, your viewers and, and customers over these next weeks is let's use what works for us. Let's not step into the winter and start trying to use those types of produce. Right. Let's use what we have. So absolutely. Um, I don't want to jump ahead because I know you're going to ask me questions here. Well, there, let me just to... say this. Let me just say this to everybody. Yeah. So what we had originally planned when Emily and I got together and we, and we toured her in our salt kitchen was a kind of a cooking class series where she actually comes down here and we thought you know why wait until this COVID mess is over let's start now and everybody will get to practice with your recipes use your recipes I've never ac actually met someone who's in their title was that they're a recipe writer um, <laughs> that's pretty cool um, whenever I just put things together I don't write the recipe down and sometimes it's good and sometimes it's bad. And when it's good, I can never replicate it. So um, it's pretty neat to have a, a recipe writer. Now, what we'll do everybody is we're going to learn how to um, make a dish today mm -hmm. and some goodies that it would pair with that you can pick up here. And um, as we get to know Emily a little more, we'll talk to her while she's cooking and explaining what she's doing. Um, but, and then over the next four weeks, you guys will get to know her and get to practice with some of those recipes. And then hopefully, um, we'll have you down here and have you, um, we'll host you in our bed and breakfast and we'll pick back up on our vintners dinners. We'll pick back up on, um, our salt classes, our cooking classes. So, um, all of you out there just be looking for that. And, um, as soon as we can have a wine pairing dinner and vintners dinner, we're going to have Emily out as a guest chef. 
and uh, also we'll have Emily um, come and um, uh, teach us some fun stuff in the salt kitchen. So um, we're super excited about that. Emily, one more thing before yeah, you start. Sure. You are an instructor at mm -hmm. a university. So what do you teach there? So I teach, um, I have, there's a, a local community college that I have been working with. This is my third, fourth, upcoming fourth semester to, to work there. And so some of the things that we do, um, I love the fact that the heart of the community college is really to come alongside the community that they are in and um, both give knowledge, give opportunity for community engagement. Um, so there's a perspective that's a little bit different than, uh, let's just say, a, a large cooking uh, institution. And so I encounter beginners. I encounter retired people who are looking to uh, just interact in uh, with other people and get to know other people. We also have a couple of classes a semester with some adults with disabilities. So I really have an opportunity to meet a large uh, variety of people in our community. And the goal for, for me as I'm teaching those classes is to give the, the student uh, the courage to try some things on their own. Give them some skill that they can take and practice at home, but also give them some self-confidence that this is not a scary thing. Um, we've taught everything from, um, let's see, I'm on this thinking, well, we've taught, I've taught hand-rolled truffles, so how to make a, a truffle. Um, we've done knife skills as a very fun class. That's a super fun class. Just learning how to sharpen a knife. You know? Learning how to chop an onion. Those are the two things that change my life. It, 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 it's one of those things that you, if you haven't built the foundation, it really is interesting how that affects your uh, experience in your own home kitchen. If you're frustrated with uh, your tools, trying to chop stuff or if stuff doesn't look pretty or whatever it is and you feel like you can't ever figure it out. And so those are the building blocks that um, I really try to provide to people that they can just take and, and their own cooking is just a little bit more elevated. And I think I, personally, I want knife skills to be the first one you teach. Yeah. When I'd you come out here, that, that'll be so fun and it's so fun to learn um and it's fun to come to a class with your own knives and yes. actually leave with sharp knives and knowing how to use them so exactly yeah exactly. okay yeah that that was a fun that was a fun class as a matter of fact i had i also teach kids um we just finished a cooking camp last week where i had uh, 11 kids and one of the sessions in that camp was knife skills and my mom was my helper. And I had, before the class started, I said, okay, mom, these are the, the different cuts I'm gonna show you how to do, or I'm gonna show the students how to do. Let's just run through um, the agenda real quick. And we get to the onion and she says, you know what? I can't, I've been cutting an onion. I know it's wrong, but I've been cutting it this way for 60 years and I'm not gonna be able to make that change. And I said, good. I'm glad you know where you are because yeah. Um, we don't, I don't want you doing something that's awkward and you're going to harm yourself. So if okay. that's, what's nice about knife skills is you have time to just get your muscle memory around the proper way to do it. That two minutes before class started wasn't enough for my mom to figure <laughs> it out. Uh, yeah. yeah. I didn't want an injury in that. So, <laughs> so hot Texas and Oklahoma summer. Yes. And okay, so uh, Texans, there's there's something we love, and it doesn't matter where in Texas, if it's Dallas, Fort Worth, if it's San Antonio, if it's Austin, if it's Houston, if it's Tyler, Lufkin, even Shreveport, all of our <laughs> Shreveport fans, we can eat some chips and salsa. Oh, amen. That's my love language is chips and salsa. Chip, oh my goodness, <laughs> chips and salsa, and. A margarita, <laughs> and that's a that's a complete meal. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yes, yes. So you guys give us a thumbs up if you think chips, salsa, and um, a margarita is a complete meal. Um, I know we'll get some thumbs up on that because. Yeah. Uh, okay, so talk to us about what you have, Emily. Okay, so what I've got 
in my garden, one of the things that I like to do is I grow um, my, my two of my favorite things to grow in the garden are tomatoes and peppers because salsa and chips are my love language. Um, and so I grow my peppers from seed and here are just a few. I'm Ooh, nice. I got to get close and look. Yeah. So what kind I of peppers have, are those? Well, this is called a corbachi. And it is a very sweet pepper. It looks like it would be wicked hot, but it is very sweet, very flavorful. Now, it's is my that, favorite. That's something we can find in the grocery store. Easy. What is it called? Can you spell this it for is us? C O R B A C H I. And no, you can't. This is an heirloom pepper, but a, tra a, 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 a translatable pepper would just be a red sweet bell pepper. Oh, so, okay. Sweet bell uh, pepper. Sweet bell pepper. I want to tell one of our friends, Ron Martin, Ron and Pam Martin, if you are watching or if you're going to see this, Ron, we want you to grow some Torbachi peppers. Torbachi. And I have seeds that I can send to you. I got these from rare, rarecreekseed.com. Um, rare, no, rareseeds.com. But I have seeds that I'm saving, so for next year. Awesome. And you may recognize this shape of a pepper. Yes. This is a jalapeno. Yes. But this is a special jalapeno's orange spice. And so this is also grown from seed. But what, what, what we're going to use is a combination of uh, hot and sweet peppers. So, okay. um, so you what can are, adjust it. What would be the translatable hot and sweet peppers? If sweet pepper would, would be a red bell pepper. So get yourself a couple of red bell peppers. To me, those are the sweetest of the, of the, of the grocery bells. store peppers. Okay. And a couple of jalapenos, or this is a cayenne type. Yes. So um, a couple cayenne. If you like really hot, then you would air, uh, um, you would have a greater percentage of hot peppers to, to sweet peppers. So I'm, my hubby loves the heat, and I'm a wimp, so... Um, what I do is I get hot peppers and I wash out the seeds and there's yeah. still enough heat in the hot peppers, in the hot cayenne or the jalapeno, um, even after we wash out those seeds. <laughs> You're right, there is. And I also grow, it's not ripe yet, it's a later, um, it's a pepper that's later to harvest, but it's a habanada and it tastes exactly like a habanero with no heat. Ooh. And so I'm guessing his palate would at least be satiated with those intense flavors of habanero. Yes. And, and what's funny is when you take a bite of that pepper, you're waiting for it to just come in and punch you in the jaw. And it never comes. Because you know cool. it's going to be hot and it never, um, arri that heat never arrives. Now so, that's a pepper for me, for the wimpy. Yeah, the it is. Because you get to enjoy food. why those things taste so good. Um, another thing that I have right now are my cherry tomatoes and just my regular tomatoes. So we're yes. just going to, um, what we're going to do is we want to roast these things for about 40 minutes at 425 degrees. So roast them for 40 minutes at 425 and you, you don't cut them, slice them, you just put them on hold? The, the cherries I'm leaving whole and I'll pop those stems off when, um, when they've roasted, they're, they're just easy to come. But I've got a couple of larger tomatoes that I'm going to do in half. And I'm going to put them skin side down. It just makes it to where they don't stick to the pan. That okay, much. so did you put some Pam spray or some butter or anything? Or do you just put it on just like that? I lightly sprayed. I did not use butter and I didn't use... Um, uh, any oil or anything because I don't want an oily salsa. We, oh. we salsa lovers prefer the, you know, the, the tomato to shine, yes. not that fat to cover our palate. So it's a super light spray so that it um, can release from the pan. And I also like, have yep. Yep, onions. So I, these are from my garden also, and I just sliced them in half. I'm even leaving that, I washed them. So I'm leaving that uh, pepper, I mean paper, the outer paper on, and that'll either peel off or soften in the oven. And so you just kind of figure out how that, what you need to do with that um, as it comes out of the oven. So that goes in the oven with the magic of Instagram television. Wow. This is what fast. we have. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was fast. You like that, Marnell? <laughs> 
And so what happened is all the liquid from the tomatoes caramelized and the sugars just released in a really yummy way. But I also have, if you can see, some char on those bits. Yeah, absolutely. So that and was 40 minutes? That was 40 minutes at 425. I just got and, close enough to read a question. Okay. <laughs> so it said, are you guys able to reopen yet? So just to answer that, we are closed for on-premise consumption, everybody. And um, we do have to-go cocktail mixers. And you can swing by and pick up our tuxila. Um, and uh, I, I hope we can open soon. Keep praying that we can. Keep praying that this silly virus goes away so that uh, we can all be together face to face. Okay, so you just scooped it into a bowl, I see. Yeah, I scooped it into my food processor, so let me unrelease or release oh, this. Oh, it's a so food can... processor. Yeah, so it's in my food processor bowl. Now, are there still stems on those peppers? I picked the stem off. Okay. So. Once, once they roasted in the oven, these stems came off super easy. The tomato stems came off super easy, but I did not core the peppers or the tomatoes. And I even have a little bit of um, root from my onion. You know, all that stuff really caramelizes and sweetens. And so the oven does a, a couple f favors where it caramelizes and tenderizes. And then the food processor does us a couple more favors that pulverizes it all, so right. um, you don't notice those hard texture, you know, those, those Okay, so if you don't have a food processor, can you use your blender? You absolutely can use your blender or one of those uh, magic bullets. Um, you can even do a rough, super rough chop on all of these ingredients and have it more the consistency of like Pico de Gallio, um, which I think is delicious with chips as well so um yeah you don't have to use a food processor blender works great magic bullet or just a good chopping by hand awesome and so this is cilantro that you're chopping well i am right now i have some flat chinese chives and my cilantro already bolted and um turned bitter in the withered and died so in my garden midsummer salsa is going to include some italian parsley a little bit of oregano and a yummy citrus mint so we're that's what identifies this as being midsummer if it was early summer i would have had plenty of cilantro and see so. that's the that's the seasonality of it so yes. as the season evolves and the season changes um, those different herbs are kind of change the flavor of your food. Um, that's why we get pumpkin spice lattes at Starbucks, isn't it? Yes. And if you're a gardener who slaved away in the garden, you're wanting to use those things. You know, Absolutely. You're, you're, to, to, I sure could run to the grocery store and spend 99 cents on a bunch of cilantro and it would be delicious. And those are the flavors that we expect and, and love and are wonderful. But for somebody who's been working in the garden and I have all this mint and oregano and Italian parsley, it make, it brings me an extra delight to use, <laughs> you know, what is just right outside my door. So, so is, are there any rules or tricks or something we need to, to kind of follow and knowing what, what's like an absolute no, no when you're making a salsa from your leafy herbs? I would say a no, no, let's see. Once you add vinegar, you've taken it from a salsa to a bruschetta. So, or you may say bruschetta. Um, that, that is a no-no. Basil is another one that I will withhold from the salsa. Because then you world. just go kind of a weird Italian way thing. Yes. <laughs> and um, I went ahead and did, uh, I probably have um, maybe one tablespoon of mint because when I start to think about flavors, cilantro has that um, soapy flavor to it a little right. bit, and mint does that to me too. So I exchanged the, the flavors of mint for cilantro, 
So I see we have a couple people that joined. Um, so glad that you guys have joined us on Instagram. This is my very first Instagram video, and I'm doing it with Emily Sherman. Emily is joining us from Oklahoma, and we are doing a pairing, a virtual pairing. Margaritas. So we have our to-go margarita mix and our Texila that we make here. And uh, Emily is a um, food blogger and a um, recipe writer. That's just so cool that, that you're a recipe writer. I'm, I can't get over that. <laughs> Super passionate about food. And um, I met Emily here just actually a few weeks ago. And yes. this is our first time to collaborate. So she is making a salsa from Oklahoma because we decided that chip salsa and margarita, in fact, is a meal. So yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what we've got. We've got our fresh herbs, garden fresh herbs. And if you don't have, if you don't grow your own herbs, don't worry we're just using this is called a midsummer salsa because it's what in my what's in my garden mid midsummer um but if you want to use cilantro uh you would use about a half a bunch of cilantro for what it is that we've used here um and i've added while you were talking i added about a cup and a half of crushed tomatoes um and can crush to, like yes here, here in my neck of the woods they come that comes in a can <laughs> well this is what happens when you order it on amazon and this is how it comes <laughs> gotcha. i really like this brand though it's a product of italy it's packaged um eat just the right amount and so, so it's just crushed yeah i know this is first, but just crushed tomatoes now if you have a ton of tomatoes in your garden how would you get those tomatoes to the point? Would you just just boil, stew them or boil them? or? You could. You can also just roast them all off in the oven. Um, I, I like, just as a, my little secret tip, um, when I write a recipe for salsa, I like the, the uh, to do half and half fresh tomatoes and canned or processed tomatoes just because it um, it adds a, a yummy texture. Fresh tomatoes can maybe be high in moisture or water. And then what ends up happening as it sits is it separates the meat of the tomato and the water. Right, the exactly. Yeah, that and happens. So I found a, about half and half if you do canned crushed tomatoes, a, a good yummy variety, and half fresh garden tomatoes. It The texture of that salsa. There's something that. kind of cool about a lot of canned vegetables or the, that that is this umami character mushrooms get it too so you get this really savory um uh taste sensation from that well and, some depth and they've um they've been treated well you know so they were they were processed at their prime and so what you're putting in here you're appreciating another good thing about this packaged is that metallic taste that can go in that you can notice if you haven't pro you know heated tomatoes so not. since we all have amazon can you put that box back up to the camera so we can see what that is exactly so i know it's backwards but it's c-o-l-a-v-i-t-a -A. got it covita cola vita cola vita yep and I, it's just the, i like this it's Thir almost 14 ounces it's a cup and a half and it's just a handy little amount to have so so that's all I do I added a little bit of okay, salt and here. pepper and I'm gonna hit the processor so y'all are gonna hear that sound and this is the point where you if you like chunky salsa then just um, be careful about how much you process if you like a really smooth one then just you know count to 30 on this and it should be good <laughs> And then I like to give it a taste to see where we stand. I, I know. I'm. I just got excited. Like I get to taste it. This is the only bad part. Is that no? I'm not this is the this. only bad part. Here it is. <laughs> I like the chunk of it. The gloss that you can see from those caramelized sugars. Oh yeah. Isn't that beautiful? Gorgeous. Okay, let's taste it. Is it good? Okay. It's great. Now, that mint does a really interesting thing. It kind of subs as the cilantro flavor. It definitely doesn't have an Italian, um, 
you know, that I, that you would kind of think would happen with that oregano and Italian parsley. This is, this does not have that flavor. That. So I just, someone said we like it chunky in Texas. Um, that looks pretty chunky to me. <laughs> yeah. You know, this reminds me when I lived, I lived in Dallas for almost four years and I, that was when Uncle Julio's was like new and you had to stand in line to get into it. This reminds me of Uncle Julio's salsa, that roasted yeah. salsa that has the um, texture. There's some of my peppers are hot. And so I just, a little part of my palate went boop. Yeah. <laughs> with heat. Uh, but it's really good. And it's good that mint balances it out. Okay, it does. So, so chips, you've got chips. I've got my chips and all I need is a little bit of keeper salt. Well, listen folks chips and salsa and the texila so if you guys get on yep there it is there's the pairing this you are all set to do this at home uh emily thank you for showing us yeah that. thank you for doing that and i look so forward to doing more of these and learning more um and i am so gonna go home so i'm working on this keto diet i'm trying to not eat carbs which means that um, I have to save up for a margarita. Um, <laughs> but um, there are some Jamie Lee, that uh, our winemaker's wife, and she works here at Keeper Saul. Um, Jamie has found some um, carb-free tortillas, and we talked about making chips out of those. So the salsa even can go on chicken, it can it it can top lettuce, so many things. Lettuce wrap tacos. Oh um, yes. I like to do a really yummy like ground buffalo or ground beef, and then this instead of um, adding well like the old El Paso pack, I make my own taco seasoning blend. But I also like to put a big scoop of salsa to make that really juicy, and that's really good if you get a lettuce wrap or a cabbage taco and have this yeah. meat feeling. You don't, you feel like you've missed nothing. So exactly, exactly. that's my suggestion. And if you've so, got your flavors of your salsa really on point, that's what shines anyway. I'm always like, I'll eat salsa by the spoon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so to everyone watching, you guys put in the comments what you want to learn from Emily, what you would like to learn. We, She and I are both leaning towards a knife skills class whenever she gets to come live. Next week, we're planning on getting when she gets to come in real life, not live. So next week, we're going to, we'll probably hop on live again. Yeah. And um, we'll bring another recipe to you and we'll bring something else that you can pick up. And we're hoping and praying that you can come and get it here. And um, we'll get some of these recipes um, made here too. And, yeah. uh, and I will post this recipe in my stories and tag keeper saw, and it's going to end up going up on my blog as well. So that once perfect. the stories, you know, how Instagram stories kind of disappear over a 24 hour window, you can come back and see it again. And so. I think we'll post and share, right, Mike? So what the other thing is, you guys check out her blog. And um, we look forward to you coming out. You guys hop on and see what we're doing. Emily gets on our infusionist. She gets on as well. So we have two Emilys. And maybe we'll get you and em our two Emilys together um, where Emily will work through a cocktail recipe live while you guys, while you're working on another one of your recipes. So yeah, that'd but, be wonderful. I'd love to do that. That would be a lot of fun. So we have this recipe. It, it was posted yesterday. So um, just look yesterday on Facebook or Instagram and you can see, but you just got to swing by here, pick this up and, um, and check out Emily's recipe. Emily, Thank you, thank you, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. See, we don't have to do the elbow thing when we're that, um, that's right. virtual. That's, we can give hugs. Right. And <laughs> so well, thank you for having me. It was a lot of fun. And I've got a couple fun things planned over the next few weeks. I can't wait to um, just continue to meet up and talk food and drinks and all those things. Awesome, Emily. Thank you. And you guys let us know if there's, if you guys want something special, if you want um, what you would like, what class you'd like to come to, because we plan on bringing her down here to Texas from Oklahoma 
and um, we'll be together in person. You guys yeah. take care.